Hey guys, it's Rachel. Um, it's Thankful Thursday. Sorry I didn't make a video last week. I seem to spend most of my time apologising for not making videos. Um, things have been a bit rough of recent. Um, and I know not last week, the week before, I joined the two videos together. And what I'm going to do today, because we're finishing up the road for this week until we start um, the next one, um, is to join again the two videos. So the one from last week and the one from the week before. And um, so the first part of this video we're going to hopefully look at sort of the complications of over exercise, sort of what over exercise is, how addictive it is, and then kind of moving on to how we can continue to exercise in recovery, how we can learn to manage that, how we can enjoy something without it feeling like we need to do more, actually just enjoy it for what it is, not seeing it as exercise, um, if you want to use the word keep fit. Um, doing something that's good for you, um, you know, doing classes, doing dance classes or whatever are good for social reasons, you know, you get some exercise that kind of gets you out of the house, lifts you up a little bit. Um, and so I was also going to talk about kind of how to cut down on exercise um, and help you challenge some of that negativity and the guilt that can come with some of that. Um, Over exercise is a major part of most people's eating disorder, not for everybody. Um, of course there are people who it hasn't been an issue for, um, but for a large majority of people across the range of eating disorders, overexercise is a major problem. How we determine what overexercise is, is very difficult. I don't think it's on a scale, you can't sort of say a person who does X amount is overexercising and a person who does X amount is overexercising. It's each unique to the person and I think that what potentially the best way to sort of gauge the over exercise, um, which happens to people without eating disorders as well, is this idea that if you don't go, you feel terrible guilt, that you feel this compulsive need to kind of go. Um, certainly, with eating disorders, that this need to kind of um, rid yourself to like get rid of what's been taken in, to, to burn off any fat you think you're carrying on your body, that you can't be still, you have to move, 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 that you're lazy, that you're a sloth, that you're all of these negative things if you're not engaging in not just exercise but activity as a whole. So if you have a day off where you just chill out, watch magazines, read a DVD, most people with some sort of eating disorder and certainly, you know, as well in recovery, feel bad. They use words like lazy, um, I'm a lazy cow, I, I, I can't bother doing anything, ugh, I'm just, you know, useless, I can't even, you know, you can't even give yourself a day off without feeling bad about it and what ultimately happens with that and certainly in recovery is that food can sometimes then become difficult because you can be eating the same amount of food in your recovery plan or what have you but by not doing any re any exercise those thoughts in your head are well all I'm doing is sort of sitting my ass and doing nothing but that's not what you're doing you know being able to sort of lie around and read a book and sort of watch some television and chill out is allowed it's a normal part of what we do um, and there's no reason to feel guilty about that. Um, over exercise for me was, was, was a big issue. Um, in my other video I did talk about sport and the role that sport played but my over exercise was never really about sport per se because it was never about doing something that I particularly felt passionate about or I desperately wanted to do. Most of the time I was so exhausted that I, I just didn't even have the energy to do it but I would still get up at 4am and do some form of workout. So the over exercise in, in, in that regard and what you might pick up on is, is still forcing yourself to do that walk, it's still forcing yourself to do whatever you do before you go to work, after you go to work. God, simple things like taking the stairs <laughs> um, at college, university, at work, rather than taking the lift, it, it just comes in the small things. It, you know, you, I remember I used to get off at the bus stop, like quite a few stops before mine. I would insist on walking home from the train station, regardless of the weather, regardless of anything, regardless of someone being able to pick me up. I wouldn't allow myself to get around town and university any other way other than by walking. And it was this constant need to keep myself going, keep myself moving, because if I was to be still, dare I be still, God knows what would happen to my body. You know, a lot of people, even I didn't really sleep that much, feel guilty for sleeping too much and may wake up late and be like, oh my God, I'm so lazy because they're so used to being up and going and doing so much. What you'll find with over-exercise is that it is incredibly addictive. 
it's something that isn't a nice cycle. It's something that many a time I would just feel like I just wanted to collapse in tears because I would be pushing my body and I would be say walking and I would just my body was was just just dying literally because it just did not have that energy to the point that I would be physically sick because it didn't have the energy to be doing it but it was like this this voice in my head that was just screaming at me that this is what I had to do this is what I had to do I've got to keep going I've got to keep doing and it was like a form of self self punishment um, and I'm not saying that that's the same for everybody but I think that when you're forcing yourself to do something and there is the opportunity that you can't do that that there is sort of potential problem there of course it's in extremes I mean you've got people who uh, I started to go to the gym during my finals which in all fairness is what saved me through my finals at my undergrad um, and it was a means of coping because it was just getting all this stress out but it kind of started to take on a life of its own, of its own when that sort of ended in one hour sort of three times a week became one hour five times a week to every day to longer to longer to the point where I was just like I'm going to have to stop because if I go, there's no way I can just do a bit. I will end up doing exactly what I feel to need, feel I need to do, and I will do that because I just don't want to have to deal with those feelings of guilt afterwards. And that's what would start to happen that I wouldn't go, and I was I was feeling incredibly guilty. But that for me, that far into my recovery, was sort of talking 2008. Um, was enough to be a bit of an alarm bell really to sort of say come on Rach this, this is too much this is too much if you're feeling guilty if you're feeling you can't even rest without feeling you need to go and do something go for a run go on all these machines do everything you need to do um, so that was a problem and I don't actually do anything anymore um, and I did try to go back into to sort of exercise as I've gone along um, but I have had a lot of physical complications and that's something else that you might find. Um, I have incredibly swollen joints in my back, um, arthritic pretty much, uh, incredible pain across this back, the hip bones at the back, pain that is with me all day, every day, that was potentially triggered by my gymnastic and um, because I never gave my chance the chance for my, for my body to heal because of my eating disorder it's never healed and so I am pretty much all day every day in pain um, and it is a matter of just trying to get on with it limits my activity hugely limits the amount of it, what kind of it, if I, if I want to go for a run it, I just like pay for it for I don't know how long and it's like when I went to Paris last year and we were walking around it, it, it really then starts to like my back killing you know walking around the city taking pictures doing just what normal people do it would really start to, it really starts to impact the pain that I'm in um, I've also had two knee, knee surgeries on my left knee because of the over exercise because of the intensity and the damage that I've done um, through over exercise um, and really over exercise is an incredibly destructive behaviour because it can really really mess your body up um, and if you're not doing it when you're not eating you're more likely to mess your body up and you're going to start eating away um, at you know there's going to start to be muscle wastage there because there's only so much that your body is capable of um, so if over exercise is a problem for you I would say that you need to try and address that and, and I'm not 100% sure how you address that but my advice would be certainly to um, manage it in some way. Most people um, with these difficulties are incredibly black and white, not everybody, but it tends to be quite difficult to say to a person with eating disorder issues the word moderation, I've heard that word a thousand times and I used to hear it when I was at university because everything had to be this complete perfectionist and it was like moderation rate, moderation rate. I used to just want to scream at the people who used to say that to me. Um, so that is something that although I wanted to scream at them because of it, I did start to take on board and part of my therapy was dealing with that perfectionist side of me and I'm no longer a perfectionist, I try hard and I do my best at stuff 
what I don't expect myself to do everything perfectly, um, if perfect even exists. And so then when it came to limiting my behaviours, um, I didn't feel this need to have to achieve everything, including doing a 10 mile walk before I went into university. And as, as those pressures lessened, as they lessened in other behaviours, you know, no recovery is perfect. You've got to be allowed to slip. You've got to be allowed to fall down. That's sort of some of the ways in in which you can begin to cut back um, on your exercise. And um, as I worked in therapy with some of those perfectionism traits, I didn't feel the pressure in my school work, my uni work as much. Um, I didn't feel I had to achieve completely. Um, I didn't feel I had to spend hours and hours doing my work. I would sort of do what I wanted to do really, just sort of do a bit and move on. And you have to kind of think about your health in terms of other behaviours with things like exercise, compulsive exercise, um, the addiction of it, with like things like self-injury as, as equally addictive, binging and purging, um, starving yourself, all the cycles that um, are wrapped up in eating disorders, binging and such, um, are all addictive behaviours and quite often there needs to be some sort of cut off from that. So with exercise, for me, I would advise you, as hard as it would be for you, is to take an initial period of not exercising. Um, in your recovery, you need to give yourself that space and say, right, I'm not going to exercise. Of course we exercise because we walk around and, and it depends on where you are with you know, your illness and a lot of places when you're in hospital, you know, you, you aren't allowed to go on walks or what have you. But if, if you're kind of at home and you're doing those things, it's maybe thinking about, right, I need to walk to uni and back today. That's an added bit of exercise. Do I need to maybe add something to that? And it's about bearing that in mind, basically. And it's about, when you don't do it one day, to not feel guilty about what you'd normally eat just because you've not done a walk that you would normally do. So if you're in this pattern of getting up and going to university, for example, and walking for sort of half an hour, 40 minutes a day, and then you don't do that one day, that you don't then cut out some food because you're feeling guilty about it. Um, some of the, the the ways of getting back into sport, um, I do no exercise anymore whatsoever. I did when I was down south because I had a dog to walk. Um, I often do when I'm in London because I'm kind of moving around the tube. Um, when I go visit people, when I went to see Tracy, she took me for a walk um, with Joss along the beach um, so I do do something I do do some things um, I clean <laughs> and I classify that as my exercise um, but with regards to going back into sport well not sport but I used to do street dance classes a couple of years ago which I used to really really enjoy and actually I'm thinking about going back to and not the exercise but because it was social and because ultimately I really do need to do some form of exercise because some form of exercise is good for you uh, it's good for lifting your mood it's good just for health reasons and I really need to think about the health reasons for that um, and they're sort of the things that I would advise I did pole dancing but I did these with people and like my dance class was constrained to an hour and a half once a week with people so I was socialising I was doing what everyone else was doing and it was limited and I would go home and that was it and I got enjoyment out of it and pleasure out of it when it comes to more complex sports like still representing my university for running for example that's when you maybe need to rely on whether it's a therapist, a coach, or some that type of person to be aware of your issues and um, to help you with 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 food in that way. Um, I know someone who, when she was a ballet dancer and she had performance, but she knew she had to eat X amount that night before um, maybe getting some support from the ballet company for that. And and it is about thinking about some of those things and what you're actually putting your body through and remembering that your body does need fee feeding, it needs fuel, it needs energy and certainly, certainly if you're exerting that much that you need to give it that. I hope that's helped guys and I hope it's just maybe, even if it's just fought with and battled with some of the thoughts in your head and you know it's alright to just take time out and chill out and it's okay to not feel like you have to exercise all day every day or like exercise every single day and just try and just take it easy and if you're going to do something just try and take some enjoyment from it as well all right guys i'll see you next week bye